Hey Bears, Eric here, and in today's video, we are going to be debunking something from Hypnotic. Now, I know I've done at least one Hypnotic video on my channel. I've actually watched other clips from Hypnotic on live streams, but I think I've only uploaded one to my channel. Maybe more, I don't know. I watch so many of these anti-fandom channels, now I, I become lost sometimes on how many videos I've actually uploaded from them. But I will say this, Hypnotic is one of the most dishonest in a pond of just all dishonest people. So, you know, it takes a lot to be the most dishonest in a pond like that. Um, and it's because Hypnotic is thirsty. Hypnotic's channel is rising, they're growing, and they're doing so by just mimicking what these other guys have already done. It's kind of, we, we see it a lot. And you just get into that algorithm and then bam, 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 bam. Which, by the way, <laughs> that reminds me to tell you to join the revolution. Let's disrupt that algorithm by getting inside of it. So uh, if you want to do that, Make sure you subscribe to my channel, leave me a like, leave a comment down below. Let's screw with YouTube a little bit and mess up this algorithm that so many of these channels, these pipelines they have where YouTube keeps promoting all this negative content about media. And um, by doing that, you know, shaking it up a little bit, confusing YouTube. So make sure you hit subscribe and leave a comment down below. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is what I see very often from, from these guys is they will read an article from start to finish from Bounding Into Comics. I This is my challenge issued to any of you out there. Uh, make a video, a full video, could be about anything, where you don't just read the article. <laughs> like, just talk about your own thoughts. Pull out a couple of key phrases and just talk about your own thoughts. Like, you don't have to read the whole article from start to finish. And that might not be what Hypnotic does in this video. Uh, but... Every video I've watched from Hypnotic and most of these other people that do it, they read like 95% of an article word for word and they just go, yeah, and, and that's what I thought. Or I can't believe that's what happened. That's literally what their content is. Uh, it's it's the, just very lazy and uh, it's like regurgitating content. Anyway, we're going to watch this, but I'm already seeing uh, obviously being bounding into comics. The title of this is Sus as Fuck. Hollywood director argues X-Men 97 chose to adapt the trial of Magneto in order to take a swing at the MAGA crowd. Now, that title is one of those titles where it's like it'll grab people's attention, they'll want to click on it. But what stands out to me is it says Hollywood director. It doesn't say like, you know, X-Men writer or producer or whatever. So if it's literally just like some random person from Hollywood that talked about this, this is a nothing article. It is nothing. It is just to stoke fandom arguments. That's all it does and to drive clicks. So we'll see if that's what it is. I suspect it probably is, but we'll see if we get there. Uh, let me pitch this up speed wise. Um, we're going to play it up to 125 and uh, see what Hypnotic has to say about all this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go again with X-Men 97, man. You know, with X-Men 97, we already knew that this TV show was going to be used any way possible by the activists on Twitter. They try to push the narrative about politics always. Be what does it matter? Activists on Twitter don't, don't have anything to do with the show. Um, you, you can't chastise a series for the actions of the people that watch it. Um, that's just completely ridiculous. Being the central core of X-Men and, and civil rights were always a central core of X-Men. It was designed that way, even though uh, Stan Lee literally said that was not the case. So there's more. I got news for you, Stan Lee. I think we've talked about, actually, I think it was a video about X-Men last time I reacted to Hypnotic. Uh, Stan Lee is not the whisperer of the X-Men. The X-Men that Stan Lee's talking about are the, the, the core five X-Men, the series that was canceled because nobody was reading it got canceled, um, and then it was revitalized in the mid-70s uh, by another team that did actually create a diverse team of characters. Um, and Chris Claremont, the most prolific writer of the X-Men in the 80s and 90s, uh, wrote the stories, keeping all of that in mind, and that's the stories that people are talking about. And that is actually this, the characters that were adapted for the X-Men series in the 90s, the animated series. It was not the OG team that turned into X-Factor in the 80s. We're talking about the actual X-Men from the reboot of the series that went on to be the most successful version of the team by Chris Claremont. Stan Lee's X-Men were canceled because they were not good. And it, regardless, Stan Lee is a unreliable narrator. He's given different answers for that in different interviews. So it doesn't matter. It's a dumb talking point. Allegories don't require intent. Multiple interviews and videos about that. You guys can go find them if you want to find them. But Stan Lee openly said that was not the case. But people still adopt this narrative about modern day X-Men and how it was always meant to be this way. And it was always designed this way. And it was always woke the same way it's woke now. It's all BS, man, at the end of the day. now. We so are you saying that the X-Men were not a diverse team of characters that dealt with civil rights and social issues? I mean, you could say that, but I could literally point out several stories 
during my time reading the X-Men when it actually was released in the 80s, uh, where they did in fact deal with civil rights and uh, and being uh, marginalized and all of these other issues that we see reflected in today by people like you that don't want to let it go. Um, so unless you're arguing that the X-Men did not actually deal with those things, then you're lying. And I truly believe at this point that you don't know anything about the X-Men because you keep citing that interview from Stan Lee and only people who don't actually read the X-Men would talk about that interview because almost every X-Men fan knows that Stan Lee did not write the best X-Men stories and did not create the best team of X-Men. We have an article here from Bounding at the Comics with a headline that reads, Hollywood director argues that X-Men 97 chose to adapt the trial of Magneto in order to take a swing at the MAGA crowd? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, someone from Hollywood being so desperate to tie everything to Trump because they have TDS syndrome. Uh, that's what this show was made for, guys. So let's get into this article from Bounding at the Comics. With a I mean, again, you are talking about the way the show is received by certain fans and not the actual creative process of the show. And that's very important here because if someone is going to critique the show, crit critique the show on the merits of the show itself not on how fans react to it. To say that you, you're judging the show based on the actions of the fans of the show is brain dead. It's brain rot. So it says, even in those rare moments, when a piece of media refrains from bipartisan preaching, it seems Hollywood must go out of their way to force such a narrative upon it. This time, a horror director, Joe Russo, has attempted to claim that the adaptation of the classic The Trial of Magneto comic book storyline in X-Men 97 was done not as a homage to the original series source material, but as a direct commentary on the MAGA crowd and the January 6th insurrectionists. Ladies and so what is Joe's connection to the series? Is it going to draw the parallel there? Or is this whole article written as a hit piece on X-Men 97 based on someone who is not connected to the series having an opinion about it? Because that is, that's not journalism. That's literally not journalism. And gentlemen, I swear to everything, these people are boring. They are so unbelievably boring. I've been having people tell me that X Men 97 is actually halfway decent. I mean, they can't be so boring. You're using their statements to make content. So they can't be so boring, right? People on my side of the aisle are saying that the show is decent. Now, for me, I don't give a good. fuck if this show is decent because ultimately I will just refuse to support Disney in any manner whatsoever. But just because I refuse, and I've made this very clear, just because I'm black pilled against Disney doesn't mean that other people have to be. If you want to go support Disney, I can't tell you not to. It's not my right to do so. But for me personally, I don't care if a show is good from Disney. I just don't. Ultimately, Disney is a piece of shit company. This is going to support them in some way, shape, or form, even if it's small. And I just don't give a fuck to even bother because. And that's your right. I, I, again, I've always said this before. I'm not trying to convince anybody to do something they don't want to do. If you don't want to support Disney and you don't want to support Marvel and you don't want to buy this content or watch this content or whatever, you absolutely do have every right not to do that. Um, I don't have an issue with that, but it seems like you're going out of your way to make, to make a big deal about that. Uh, like you're triggered by it for some reason, which is a little sus because i barely have time to go actually enjoy the content that i actually enjoy between my anime my manga video games i have other stuff that i personally enjoy and i don't need to be supporting disney no matter how good a fucking show comes out from disney but even with that being said we get it you don't like disney fuck apparently people are saying the show is halfway decent so that's great to hear but you still have losers who are so boring in their life like joe russo so unbelievably boring like my boy as says boring as shit that they have to look at quoting as is peak cringe it's fucking peak cringe bro like you should not be quoting as this show and see january 6th of all things you have to look at the trial of magneto and think of maga that's how much tds you have going through your blood right now it says, written by franchise icon Chris Claremont and appearing in 1985's Uncanny X. Surprise, surprise, there's Chris Claremont's name. The person that you should be pulling quotes from when talking about the woke X-Men, not Stan Lee. X-Men Volume 1, number 200. The original The Trial of Magneto story saw the eponymous master of magnetism attempting to convince the International Court of Justice that after years of terrorist activities and wanton bloodshed, that his then recent turn to the side of the angels was in fact genuine. And then, while the years since have been seen Magneto bounce between moral alignments more than perhaps any comic book character in history... You are just going to read the whole article, aren't you? I, I remember this last time we watched. We're not going to sit through all this, everyone. I, I can tell you right now. This particular instance stands out as a particularly memorable in the annals of comic book history, thanks to the frank speech gave regarding mutant human coexistence he gives to the court in defense of his crimes. Yeah, it's a classic, classic story. It's a great story, and I think the series did a great job with it. I don't give a fuck what somebody else's takeaway is from this. This is why I say allegories don't require intent. Someone else could have a completely different perspective on a piece of art 
depending on what they think when they when they look at it, when they watch it, when they listen to it. It is entirely possible that two people walk away with, with completely different takes on it. And there's no reason for you to get mad that somebody has a take on something that you don't have. It's especially weird for you to get mad about somebody's take on something that you're not even watching and admittedly don't know anything about because you didn't watch the fucking cartoon. Met by outcry from Russia over his oh attempt. God, we're, we're not doing this. We're not, we're not going to listen to you read this fucking article all the way through. We're not going to do that again. This is some of the worst content on YouTube, in my opinion. It's, it's the most low effort, in my opinion, garbage content on YouTube, especially when it's bounding into comics. Because, again, this article doesn't even need to exist. It doesn't serve any purpose. This article is framed as a hit piece against X-Men 97 based on the opinions of somebody on YouTube or Twitter, wherever this was from, uh, who thought that the trial of Magneto mimicked like something to do with Donald Trump and January 6th. So congratulations. Somebody else has a different opinion about art than you do. But even you don't have an opinion because you didn't watch it. Channels like this, they don't even watch the content. They can't even give you their opinion on the series because they haven't watched it. So you're making a video talking about what somebody else, somebody else's perspective is from watching a cartoon that you didn't watch. And then you're going to tell them that they're wrong because the writer of an article said that they're wrong. Do you understand how absolutely pointless that is? It's pointless. And then the comments under it are just people sort of arguing about anti-woke shit, anti-woke this, anti-woke that. I don't understand how this community even functions as human beings literally go out and touch some grass or something. This is just dumb. It's dumb. And I actually feel dumb for even watching this. I don't know if I'll ever watch another video from hypnotic again. This was just stupid.